Suppose you're giving a presentation on hummingbirds. This is a very nice picture of a hummingbird, but it seems to lack the visual amazement of a hummingbird in flight. Now here's another picture of a hummingbird. What if we could show something like this in our presentation? This is what 3D models in Microsoft Office allow us to do. Let's see how we can easily insert 3D models into our presentations, how to manipulate our viewing angle, and see examples of static and animated 3D models. We'll also see how the morph transition can really spice up our 3D models. Now let's take something boring and turn it into something amazing. 3D models are available in Microsoft Office in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. To insert a 3D model, we'll go up to the Insert ribbon, and then in the Illustration section, 3D Models. Now you can insert a 3D model from the library, or if you have one on file, you can choose this device and browse out to that file. We'll start with the library. The 3D model library is vast. It's very easy to fall into this 3D model rabbit hole where you end up spending loads and loads of time going through all the different libraries and seeing what they have to offer. So you'll find a library that interests you. I'll click Industrial, and then you can see the various objects they have on file. If this isn't the area you want, you can click the back button and return to the main library. So if I were to click on Toys and scroll through, you could click multiple 3D models and insert them at the same time. I'll go for just the duck. When we click insert, the model will download. Now from here, we can resize the picture, place it wherever you need it on the slide, and if you grab the center handle, you can then rotate the duck into one of an infinite number of positions. You have control over the X, Y, and Z axis of rotation. Now there are some presets up here, so if you want to go to a very specific view, and you can try these presets out before you click them. I find it more interesting just to grab it and move it to the position that I want. There's also a pan and zoom control, and here you can grab this magnifying glass and zoom out and zoom in. So maybe you just want the top part of the duck. I could zoom in and then grab the duck and move it into position. I can still take the duck and adjust its angle. If you lose control and can't seem to get a good handle on things, you can always go up and click the reset 3D model button. This will put it back to the position it was in when it was first added to the slide. If you're a 3D modeler and create your own illustrations, you can go up to 3D models and choose this device and then browse out to wherever your object is. The 3D models feature in Microsoft Office supports these main 3D model formats. The preferred format is the binary GL transmission format, but if you use the polygon format or the stereolithography format, these options are supported as well. It seems like new formats are being added every few months, so if you don't see your format supported, give it time and one day it might show up in the list. So if I were to choose this object, hit insert, and here I've added my object to the slide. Now I can rotate it, resize it, and get it into the position I need it to be. Perfect for my presentation. Now like I said, you can go down quite the rabbit hole experimenting and playing with all these different 3D models that are available in the library. So I just want to show you a few that I found interesting. It's one thing to add an image that says POW, but what if you could take that image and you could rotate it and you could turn it? If you were to take this model and use it in conjunction with the animations page, most of the 3D models have some built-in animations you can work with, like an entrance animation for the arrival, or what it does while it's on the screen, or when it leaves the slide. If you were to use these in combination, I could utilize an entrance effect, an emphasis effect, and an exit effect. The three of those put together would end up looking like this. You'll definitely want to experiment with the different entrance, emphasis, and exit effects, as well as the various effect options that are available to each 3D model. And each 3D model is a little bit different. So let's look at some other 3D models. We've got laptop notebooks, tablets, game controllers. Here's a Rubik's Cube, police car, and we even have access to animated 3D objects, like this drone. Not only can I look at the drone from any angle, but I have built into this 3D model what are called scenes. So on the animations tab in this particular scene, I can see the drone in flight. But I also have another scene where I show the drone in an exploded view. And in this exploded view, I can look at it from any angle. I could even go up to 3D model and zoom into a specific part of the 3D model. 
to show it in detail. Here we've got some fish that we can look at from any angle. Here's a dancing cow. Not only is it entertaining to watch the cow dance, but that you can look at the cow from any angle while it dances. So here's a running T-Rex. We could have it running at us, running away from us. And don't forget on the animations page, the different scenes that you have access to. So this one has five different scenes. Here we have a bee in flight. We can look at this bee from any angle. Here's one I quite like, and this is a cross-section of a jet engine. It's interesting how we can take this and look at it from any angle. And don't forget about the pan and zoom where we can zoom in and see very critical details, again while being able to rotate. A really clever thing you can do with 3D models is to pair them up with the Morph Transition of PowerPoint. On the Transitions tab, we've got Morph. If you take a slide and duplicate it, and then add the Morph Transition to the duplicate slide, then take the duplicate and change its angle. When you play this in a normal PowerPoint presentation, the Morph Transition will fluidly shift from the position of the first slide to the position of the second slide. So here I'm looking at this in more of a side back view. In the second one, it's more of a bottom front. Then we go to a straight on front view, followed by a straight on rear view, and then back to a more isometric view of the front side. Because I've added the morph transitions to these four slides, I'll start with the first one and run the show. So this starts with my jet engine. When I go to the next slide, it now smoothly rotates into that position. And I'll go to the next slide, straight on front, then examining it from the rear, and then back to an isometric view. So that's 3D models in Microsoft Office. Be prepared to be now completely unproductive for the next three hours. If you'd like, leave a comment and tell us what your favorite 3D model is. And if you have a suggestion for an upcoming topic, feel free to ask and I'll be happy to make a video about it. And as always, at BCTI, the learning never stops.